So Alien is a franchise I have huge mixed feelings on and though I would say I'm overall a big fan of the series it definitely has its ups and downs and I know a lot of people will be doing Alien rankings this weekend in dedication of Alien Romulus dropping but I have a feeling my list will be a bit more controversial than most so I thought I'd toss my hat into the ring and let you guys hate me. Spoilers ahead for all of these movies except for the Alien vs Predator movies which I am not counting. So I'm just gonna jump right in with my seventh place, Alien Resurrection, which I think is my least controversial placement. This is generally agreed to be the worst one of the bunch, but do I think it's atrocious? Not really. I think the idea to bring Ripley back as a synthetic is super cheap and a cowardly move. I understand they didn't think this movie would be bankable if it didn't contain that character, but I think the decision to force her in is irredeemable. There's not a way this would work for me. Because we're not attached to this protagonist, Protagonist, which the movie is banking on us being, we know it's not the same Ripley, so why would we care the same? The cast of characters overall is very forgettable and honestly makes the movie worse. Aside from Ron Perlman, who was doing a pretty decent job, which is a big problem because we have to care for these characters to want them to survive. By the time the first couple guys die in this film, who are apparently part of our main crew, I didn't even remember who they were. The visual style is trying something, but it isn't something it's successful at. The big finale is horrific and though the newborn is impressive from a practical effects point of view, the whole concept behind it is questionable at the very best. I dislike nearly every moment and the only things I find worthy of much praise is Brad Dourif who is always fantastic, Dan Hedaya's shoulder hair and the basketball scene. Beyond that I don't have much to say about this movie at all. Alright so next up at number 6 is Alien Cubed and this is one I've seen a lot of revision about on Twitter lately and I just don't get it. If anything, this gets worse with age for me. But let's start out with some positives. I think the visual style is distinct here, very different from all the other entries and gives us a brand new setting that is unlike anything we've seen. It's not as flashy or stylistic, but I like the industrialist aesthetic it's going for. Also, I think we have some very fun characters and interesting personalities. Ripley goes through an interesting arc and her romantic involvements with Clemens is the best thing in the movie in my opinion, so it isn't terrible and has a decent bit going for it. But now the bad. First of all, the obvious, the xenomorph has never looked worse. The weird effect they were using with attempting to use this puppet and then green screening it in is just terrible and not done well at all. Granted the conditions were stressful for the movie, but it is just unforgivable as a watching experience. There is a single good shot of a Xeno in this movie and it's this one where it comes close to Ripley but decides to leave her alone. I also hate the journey of this film. The entire story is just so uninteresting and I think a huge part of that stems from the fact that I object to this story fundamentally. Because I watched Aliens just before this of course and after everything that happens in that movie it is made completely redundant within the first 20 minutes of Alien 3. Oh so Ripley missed her daughter's entire life life in cryosleep but then finds a surrogate daughter through the stresses of this new mission. She fights and claws nearly dies and reaches heights space marines couldn't reach just to save her life. Well guess what, she died off screen. Oh so Ripley overcame her distrust of synthetics making a huge jump in her journey in that she's finally overcoming the PTSD of the first film even going as far as to save him in equal value as Newton Hicks? Well he gets discarded immediately and we don't introduce any robots at all in this new film. Oh, so Ripley learns to trust and begins a romantic relationship with Hicks and though he's a commanding officer in an elite military task force, she saves his life and manages to get him into cryosleep giving us an overall ending of hope? Well, he also gets killed off screen and that relationship goes nowhere. Oh, what? What? You mean Ripley fought an ungodly amount to erase all the xenomorphs, queens, eggs and facehuggers off of LV-426? Well, a couple actually still got on board and didn't act until Ripley, Newton, Hicks entered cryo. All of this is so 
annoying, it retroactively makes a much better film worse, and that's a crime I cannot forgive. Not to mention it kills off Ripley in one of the most unsatisfying and undeserved deaths in cinema history. It's meant to be a cathartic death in the vein of Nancy in Nightmare 3, her sacrifice bringing around the death of the main antagonistic force, but here Ripley has done nothing but go through the worst time in anyone's life, seen countless deaths, fought countless monsters, saved people, lost people, been interrogated and coerced, sacrificed and discarded, all to come out on top and in the end the best you have for us is that she kills a chest burster on the way out? Nah man, I'm not having it, so yeah, sixth. And at five, we finally have the most recent entry in the franchise, Alien Romulus. Now, the discussion around this movie has been quite fascinating the past few days. It seems either people absolutely adore it or absolutely despise it. And I hate to be this guy, but I'm right in the middle. For a start, this movie does some genuinely fantastic things that I don't think people are giving it enough credit for. The set design is so grand and detailed. They really nailed these 70s futuristic designs that so heavily permeate the original film and branch them well well with the 80s aesthetic of the sequel. Along with that, the practical effects in the creature designs are super cool, the prop designs are really, really nice, I love how they expand on the process of a xenomorph's growth, they have some very visceral scenes of horror that work very well. There's some brilliant action set pieces, I love the xenomorph blood in zero gravity sequence, it was super well made and an interesting concept, I love the expansion on the face huggers, showing us how they detect us and then using that hypothesis to fuel a tense sneak mission. The cast is brilliant all round and though some of the characters are a little forgettable, our main duo in Kaylee Spaney's Rain and David Johnson's Andy work well and give us a dynamic we've not much seen before. Especially Johnson who plays a new android called Andy who gives easily the best performance. I knew since Rylane this guy was going to be something special and he definitely is. I also love how they made the facehugger more of a problem in this film. They're just as much as an antagonist as the fully formed xenomorph which hasn't really been done since that one sequence in Aliens and overall I think the film works pretty well most of the time. But there are some issues. Starting I hate the constant retreads of the old films, the incessant winking at the audience. It's cute once or twice but grating the more it happens, it really wore me down. Also I hate the big bad boss at the end, it was just a redo of the Alien Resurrection ending but honestly more bizarre and though it's trying a lot harder, it is a whole lot less compelling and honestly felt unnecessary. I think the whole elevator sequence was enough of a third act conflict that everything else just felt like too many ideas, too many cooks. It brings the total antagonist count to like 4 or 5 depending on how you count them and lastly the biggest problem I have. CGI Bilbo Baggins Ian Holm floaty McFloat face which is absolutely horrific. It is the worst looking use of this effect I have ever seen and aside from the moral questions using a dead actor's likeness for a movie they didn't agree to be in, it is just completely unnecessary as well as looking horrid. The character they use his likeness for isn't even Ash so they could have just used quite literally any other actor since this is just a different android. They have gone out of their way to include this which is ethically questionable and technically flawed and I wouldn't be so hard on it if they didn't keep showing it you. They keep bringing him back and it's so distracting and ruins perfectly great moments that could have been so fun otherwise if there was just a real actor giving a real performance. Plus it sticks out so much due to the massive use of practicality, so this one hugely rubber PS3 graphic is so noticeable it really kills all immersion I have. And if they wanted to use Ian Holmes likeness for what whatever reason, they really could have just used a practical puppet of a melted android of Ash's exact model. I would have honestly really liked that instead and I can't overstate how much that one element ruins this film for me. I mean even when the cast is not in the room with him, they keep cutting back to him or show him on a monitor and that makes him look like something out of an old Metal Gear Solid game. So yes, Alien Romulus has a lot going for it, but the things that let it down really ruin those positives. If it 
it's not Ian Holmes' corpse being flung around, it's the weird Xeno human at the end, or the visual homages that get more and more egregious as time goes on, or it's the constant quoting of the earlier films. It's just absolutely brutal and actively works against all of the good work going into it. But yeah, maybe I'll rewatch it once it comes out on digital or out on physical and I'll like it more, but for now, it is nowhere near our next pick. Which is number four. Alien Covenant, and the jump from Romulus to this is massive to me. There are so many beautiful questions about our existence and what it means to have a soul, and I think the cosmic and existential horror that Ridley Scott was getting into here is completely underrated. Also, I would probably go as far to say this is one of the most beautiful films in the franchise. Scott is putting his everything into the visuals here, and I think at every step he is crafting an image so powerful and grand that it perfectly perfectly matches the thematic elements he's going for. The film opens up with this conversation between David and Wayland, and it's about creators and the created, and after a moment, David goes on a speech about meeting your creator and says the line to finish, you will die, I will not. Which is potent because in the end of Prometheus, we discover that Wayland didn't die and he's on this mission to meet the engineers to fix his mortality. So this is quite clearly a deep rooted insecurity in him. So after David says this, Wayland orders him to pour him some tea and of course David complies. It's Wayland putting David in his place, reminding him that he may live forever, but he is a servant and nothing more, which is poignant when thinking of the rest of the film where David learns autonomy. And he tries to imbue that in Walter, who is very comfortable in his role of a human aide. Fassbender is crushing it all the way in this film, and I love how he plays David with this British accent that has so much underlying tones of being evil, untrustworthy, snarky, and conniving, whereas Walter has a generalised American accent, which is a lot friendlier and trustworthy. Also, Walter is part of the crew. He's offered a drink at a funeral he's chosen to attend and partakes, whereas David felt much more secluded and simply reduced to just the robot on board. And I could rant forever about all that Fassbender is doing in this film and all Scott is doing with that character, but honestly, that would be a video all its own. Aside from Fassbender, the rest of the cast are doing a great job. I love this entire cast, and the best thing that it does is kill James Franco immediately by setting the inside of his cryopod on fire. I think the backburster or whatever is absolutely raw and one of the best moments in any Alien movie, not just the horror ones, and I love that this little moment of David asking how many colonists there are after hearing they're a colony mission, like he's frothing at the mouth thinking of all the subjects. I love the moment where David kills the citizens of the city who aren't actually engineers, I love his experiments and his philosophy on creating the perfect organism, I love the Ozymandias speech and all that means, I love the bit where he talks about Shaw at her grave. I love the horror, the flute scene, the set design, the action, the tension, the humour, the effects, the twist. I love almost everything in this movie. The only thing that really drags it down for me is it not getting a sequel so it feels incomplete. There's a huge cliffhanger and it goes nowhere. I need to know where David goes from here, what his journey is after these events. I really needed that final Ridley Scott movie in this trilogy because I think it would have been glorious. Now moving on to our top three, at number three we have Aliens. I feel like I've spoken a lot about Aliens recently and I want to keep it brief because of that, but let's just remind ourselves why it's great. First of all, I watched the special edition of this film, which has an extra 17 minutes, which adds so much to the quality of this film, it's unreal they decided to cut any of it out. It has all the Amanda Ripley subplot, which makes Ripley's attachment to Newt so much more powerful and emotional. It cuts out Newt's backstory with her parents, which not only explains how the xenomorphs got to the colonists in the first place, but it also shows us the colony fully functional. Everything in these 17 minutes is so important to making the other threads work as well as they should, but the stuff that's in both cuts is also pretty great. The practical effects are incredible and honestly an upgrade from Alien. Everything from the sets to the props to the creature designs, it's all ramped up and super impressive. The tonal switch from horror to action is a good breath of fresh 
fresh air and keeps the series interesting and evolving, especially since Cameron's action filmmaking is also some of the best of all time, so it's no wonder it works so well. The introduction of the Queen is absolutely killer, the Ripley and Hicks romance is very fun and charming whilst never being distracting or at the forefront. Paxton is absolutely hilarious and fun, Bishop is a great android character to mirror Ash in the same way that Walter mirrors David, the big third act is beautiful and this is just one of the best films of all time. I'm seeing a lot of revisionism on this one lately on Twitter too, where people are starting to put it lower and I just can't get on board with that. There's a problem when people are starting to put Alien 3 over Aliens. Now this one and Alien Covenant are like on par for me, so they could interchange a lot, but overall I just love this so much and I think it may be Sigourney Weaver's best performance as Ripley. Okay, moving on to our number two, our penultimate spot, we have... Alien. Yes, yes, I know, it's Alien, it's a masterpiece, it should be number one, I get it, I get it, I get it. It's a masterclass on horror filmmaking, the unique world this builds is spectacular, the set design and creature design and sound design is on another level, I adore every character, the chestburster scene is iconic and brilliant, the vibes and cinematography are some of the best of the genre, I have never had a bad time with this movie, the whole thing is so beautiful and I iconic, Ash is one of my favourite horror antagonists of all time, and still to this day I think the reveal works amazingly, but hear me out. The xenomorph suit looks super goofy, no listen, 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 listen. When you just see the head or the silhouette, it's really intimidating, it's massively gothic and scary, truthfully, but when you see the whole body in the light, it looks so silly. I cannot emphasise enough how it is just so obviously a guy in a rubber suit, he looks like a Power Rangers villain here, also this scene where he kills Dallas is so funny, he just goes like, Mah. So yes, this movie is a masterpiece, but those few shots where you see the whole xenomorph really ruin it for me. And it is the only thing that stops this from being perfect to me. I don't want to talk about it much more because, you know, it's alien. What is there more to say? Everybody's already said everything. It's my number two. I love it, okay? So don't get angry. Which brings us finally to our number one, which is Prometheus. Now, anyone who knows me knows I have a complicated history with this movie. I started out hating it to absolutely adoring it. It became one of my favourite movies, period. I think this film gets a lot of slack because it wasn't what people wanted. And that's where I had hatred for it too. But once I started meeting the film on its own terms and seeing it for what it wants to be and not what I wanted it to be, my eyes were open. Now again, I'm not actually going to talk much about this one because I do plan on making a video about it. But firstly, just to get to a couple things, like Alien Covenant, Fassbender as David is one of the most interesting characters in sci-fi history. This film brings a complexity to androids we'd not seen before in the franchise. I also think the philosophy questions this film brings before us is also nothing like we had seen before and is handled with so much nuance and beauty. The horror elements work so very well, I think this might be the second best use of horror in this franchise other than of course Alien, even though this one is my favourite comparatively. And it is just so nihilistic, but I think it's also by far the most complex and layered and thought provoking films in the entire Alien series, it's also the best looking film in the franchise in my opinion. It's a masterpiece in every sense of the word to me, look out for the video what I do eventually do on this film because I think it is seriously massively underrated and I'll love it till I die. And that's it, that's the entire Alien franchise ranked, so feel free to send me your rankings and tell me why I'm stupid, let me know what you think of Alien Romulus and whether it's one from the varying in quality Alien franchise or not. As always, keep watching movies.